Designing and building a car is a very convoluted process. I mean, I think we all expect this. I mean, cars are complicated. But the process from initial design to concept to production can be so drastically different that what you put a deposit on at the motor show can be completely different than what you actually wind up with in your driveway. Sometimes that can be running gear changes. Looking at you, Jaguar XJ220. Well, I'm not actually looking at one. We haven't got that far yet, but someday we might, who knows? And sometimes that can be design changes because, you know, concept cars don't really have to worry about how feasible it is to produce, what sort of money it's going to cost, and just how dead you could make a family of five in a small collision. Usually, design is the saddest change because regardless of what happens, the production car is never usually as exciting as the concept car. In some cases though, we're very, very lucky in that the designers get to be left alone and the bean counters can just bugger off and let them do whatever the hell they want. Which brings us to the Audi TT. This is what happens when the designers get to do what the fuck they want and the bean counters leave them alone. Audi, for the longest time, never really had a sports car. I know in this era of R8s and e-trons that might seem hard to believe, but it's kind of true. And I know people are going to chime in and say, oh, but the Quattro runs so much rallying. Yeah, I know. The Audi Quattro was sporty. It was not a sports car. They hinted at wanting to have a sports car in the 1990s with the likes of the Avis concept, also designed by JMAs, and the Spider concept, but for the most part, the Audi range kind of consisted of estate cars and coupes. Fantastic saloons in the States, don't get me wrong, but you know, saloons, estates and coupes nonetheless. One thing to shake things up, Audi got designers J Mays, yes, his name is actually just the letter J, I had to look into it to be sure. He worked on the Mark III Golf, which admittedly is a negative, but also worked on the TT and the E34 BMW, my favourite BMW, so he has two positives to cancel that out. And Freeman Thomas, who makes a cameo in Gran Turismo 7, talking about the TT, to work on a new sports car design, to likely be built on the modular platform that the new A3 slash Mark IV Golf, albeit shortened, was to be built on. I know, not a very sporting platform, but it could be. Now, working on the first Audi sports car was no easy task, but then Audi didn't really give this to any old amateurs. I mean, Jay and Freeman, they designed the new Beetle concept, and well, we all know what happened about that. Unveiled to the world at the 1995 Frankfurt Auto Show, the world fell in love with this unique little design, and many put down deposits on a new one, ready to see what kind of bastardization the bean characters could bestow upon it. But the world had no idea just what would happen. What would happen is this, the first generation Audi TT, named after the tourist trophy race on the Isle of Man. Not the PlayStation game by Polyphony Digital, that came a few years later. Amazingly, from the prototype to now, very little, if anything, changed. And that's kind of almost unheard of. Speaking in Gran Turismo 7, Freeman said that the design was one he holds close to his heart. He wanted it to be absolute and pure. It was inspired by Bauhaus design alongside the Porsche 356 and 550 Le Mans Coupe. He wanted the swage line along the side to connect the headlights and brake lights in a way that also commuted the idea of quattro by connecting the wheels in a visual sense. He said himself, I still cannot believe that Audi produced the TT. Even the man who designed it couldn't believe that Audi said, yes, make it. I mean, look at it. They didn't bestow any stupid corporate identity onto the front of it. This looks nothing like any Audi that came before it. I mean, some after it started to look like it, don't get me wrong, but it didn't need it, so it didn't get it. And that is why the TT is so timeless. It's not bound by any, oh, this is what we were doing at the time. This is what they did for this one car, and never again. The thing is, design and engineering should really go hand in hand. But what happens is, when one overtakes the other, is that sometimes things can go wrong. And in this instance, when designers had their wicked way, you wind up having to do something like this. Unfortunately for Audi, not having built a true sport car before and focusing primarily on design, 
meant that at high speeds, above <coughs> 112 miles per hour, the TT got a little light-footed. Or if you took a turn a bit too sharply or changed lanes a little bit too excitedly. Now there is some debate on this. Some people say, oh, well, you shouldn't be doing them type of speeds anyway, which I frankly do not agree with. Now, one point that I do agree with is that the average clientele for this type of car isn't really the hardcore driving enthusiast. I mean, Audi's first sports car was a cutesy little small one that's easy to insure and I'm willing to bet that some degree of, uh, shall we say, human error is bound to play a part in this. Either way, Audi decided to play it safe. Knowing that it could lead to some disastrous consequences, they then made a lip spoiler standard on the boot lid and adjusted some suspension components to make it a little bit more tame. Some complained that we were in the driving experience, many were happy to have the choice of being alive, so I think it's a fair cop. Now if ID was going to lose one of the key factors of a true sports car, rear wheel drive, it would have to make up for it in another way. Engine. Which coincidentally is actually the reason I bought this car. To rip this thing out. Now the 225 BAM engine, named after famed skater Bam Margera, is the engine that boys froth over for doing engine swaps. Quite frankly, I'm pretty happy with my little 180 here, and you can map it to 210, so you know, ugh. But, in 2003, the Audi TT would get the engine from the Golf R32, a V6 sporting nearly 250 horsepower. Now, a lot of people say bigger is better. I've been told that before. But, Bigger is bigger. Uh, a lot of people actually reckon that the 1.8T with the 225 engine in it is actually just as quick off the line as the V6. So, you know... Now granted, I don't have a hat in the ring, I don't have a 225 or a V6, so I don't really care what you do. But it is something to think about if you're looking to get into a TT with power without the hefty price tag. And while we're at it, let's talk about this interior. I mean, I usually don't really care for Audi interiors, I'll admit. I'm a Mercedes guy, and a Volkswagen guy, and an Audi is kind of just somewhere in the middle, kind of like a BMW. But, here's the thing, if you can only have one, that's exactly what you need. For the TT, however, they actually give it a little bit of character, which to me is unheard of for anything with four rings on the steering wheel. Ah, that aluminium petrol cap that is oh so max power made its way into the cabin with the air vents, the steering wheel, the gear gator, even the door cards, all following suit. And it's a stupid thing to love, but for some reason I just bloody love that they've hidden the radio behind this TT fascia. It's oh so Peugeot 405. The quality of this cabin too is, to be fair, second to none. I mean, heated suede bucket seats as standard. No squeaks, no rattles. I mean, it's great. As long as you're not looking at the instrument cluster, which was so bad they had to recall it, and as long as you're not using the throttle pedal too much, which is prone to snap, and as long as you're not sitting in the back seats, because, well, there's a reason that everybody just takes them out. Naturally enough, critics back in the day, hold on, not this far back, thanks, Connor. Critics back in the day loved the TT. They lavished over the style, the build quality, even the price. I mean, this was a cheap sports car. I mean, its rivals were all rear wheel drive and much, much lighter and faster and more desirable and rare, but they were still, you know, expensive and hard to get. The TT was cheap, going to any Audi dealership and there you go. You're not going to find a Lotus dealership in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. And you're certainly not going to get aftermarket support for it either. The TT was a sensible man's sports car. Or woman's. Now, don't get me wrong, it wasn't all hunky-dory. Other than the old spoiler thing, the only real complaint was that the TT was a little bit boring. 12 year old Richard Hammond said something to that effect, that it was difficult to rag and have fun with. It was just too safe. I mean, it's a sports car based on a Golf. What more are they gonna do? One minute it's too unstable, the next minute it's too safe. I mean, damned if you do, damned if you bloody don't. I mean, you also have to realize this is a sports car that weighs a ton and a half. Even winning the 2002 DTM Manufacturers Championship didn't really do much to give the TT more of a sporting image. They were still thought of as too cutesy to have any real pedigree. As Audi replaced the TT namesake back in November 2023, 
and with the way things are going with the car industry at the minute and sports cars and electric cars it's unknown if they'll ever bring the namesake back which is honestly a bit of a shame two generations did come after this and yeah they were very successful but they were just a bit too forced corporate image for my liking initially i was looking for an audi tt as an engine donor for my mark 2 gti this one came up very cheap and i thought great that'll be an engine donor at that price it has to be fucked unfortunately this car is fucking amazing and i just cannot bring myself to do it so uh welcome to the fleet the simplicity timelessness and huge following of the rdtt pretty much guarantees that this is going to be a future classic buy one now before you wish you did